why are the cameras going? What was this dream you had the other night? It was very strange. I'd been on the ground out here about three days. I had a very vivid dream about a corporation. The corporation's name was Warco. And their whole idea was let's create an environment where we can simulate battles and contract for various nations. It's the way they can solve their uh, problems with decisions coming down from a world court-like power, and it would help out the corporate structure around the world. Right now at the NTC, we fight the Krasnovians. The Krasnovians use Soviet-style doctrine, uh, but they are unlike any Soviet army on Earth because uh, there is no Soviet army anymore. Through this, we see our computer screen and our three visual devices. We have now fire-and-forget missiles. What you see is what you get. GE delivering real training in real time in Operation Desert Storm. We're now part of, I think, an unbroken chain between the industry and the DOD, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. The benefits of war games and simulations are that it creates a world that people can be in without actually being in the real world. What's it about? It's about simulations. The very definition of the real has become that of which it is possible to give an equivalent reproduction. The real is not only what can be reproduced, but that which is always already reproduced. I want our viewers to listen in. You ever worried they'll get too much like a Nintendo game? The way they're pushing it, they're trying to push it. The big computer-generated thing, run you here and there. And just, they just like the aliens off the aliens war, the Marines. And the future technology, all of them have their own computer-built things. That's what it's probably eventually moving toward. You mean the colonial Marines and <laughs> aliens, eh? Yeah. The new virtual technologies developed by this landmark venture will help us build a future that is brighter, more prosperous, and more secure. Today we continue that partnership with academia and industry for the benefit of the United States national defense, as well as for the entertainment, multimedia, video game, film, destination theme park, and information technology industries that are such a key part of California's economy. It will even help our recruiting as the Army goes more high tech. Yes, sir. Is there any sort of ethical check and balance when you pair together the power of Hollywood with the power of technology that we won't have something like Wag the Dog down the line coming out of the USC Center? The way that training films were used with propaganda films in World War II to present a viewpoint about the war. As, as Jack is coming up to respond to that, <laughs> really this ability to simulate began in Greek theater. And one of the points that Plato makes over and over again is that poets lie because it was so engaging and so attractive that it sometimes led people astray from the truth. The gentleman worried about wag the dog taking place. Dropping the atomic bomb in Japan. A lot of people thought that was a heartless and terrible thing to do. The people who thought differently were the 100 or 150,000 young American boys whose lives would have been lost if they had to invade Japan. So you have to look at this not from your own perspective, but from everybody else's perspectives. We are in a world of virtual reality, and I think that what will come out of this is a kind of a new heightening of the superb efficiency of the fighting men of this country. War game is for real. Right. We'll bring the desert to them. My virtual Hajj began at Fort Irwin to witness the advanced war fighting experiment, aka awe early forerunner of what Donald Rumsfeld would later call shock and awe. Second Brigade attacks zone to secure the international border. Right down here is my command and control computer system. The dismounted soldiers, they'll come up with a little symbol that kind of looks like a little man. Positive buzz sounds on the left side, negative buzz sounds on the right side. We can shoot this laser beam out there and it can return and give you a 10 digit grid coordinate. Simultaneously, it also goes back to the Star Wars building or the operations center. Operations other than war. Utois. They change it again? As you know, Dan, you've broken down now into Soania, Vilslakia, and also Euroline. And north of us, we even have a place called Fredonia. We put them in what I call the grunge look, the Eastern European look, if you will. As you see, here's an example of some of these guys. Oh. They're going to start now. Get back. They're going to start. They're going to get even. Oh. 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 
realism to get to work in civil affairs, psyops, local policy. So the location of this best is known to bring this system to the background. Of course, our satellites are role-playing. They're asking for help from higher headquarters right now. If the thing turned nasty, and it should not. The United Nations forces are capable of dominating the situation with firepower here. In this virtual world, dying and killing became less plausible and all the more possible. The reality of death has disappeared by the images of easy, high-tech victories, low casualty conflicts, and ethical killings. In virtuous war, we now face not just the confusion, but the pixelation of war and game on the same screen. We're all soldiers of peace, please. None of the stuff that you're going to see is staged. It's all live footage taken from video in the box during the stability operations. <laughs> The United States leads the way in this virtual revolution, but other countries and international organizations are in hot pursuit, believing that war can supernaturally solve long-running, intractable political conflicts. Call it a dream state, a symbolic realm, or merely an illusion. Virtuous war projects a mythos as well as an ethos, a kind of collective unconsciousness for an epoch's greatest aspirations and greatest insecurities. Let's go to Kosovo. First of all, was it a war? No. It's coercive diplomacy. But I call it a war because the American public doesn't understand it. There is no, you know, God did not hand down on tablets the definition of network-centric warfare. Demonstrative use of force, signaling by use of force, minimal use of force with minimum casualties. It's, it is, in that sense, a highly principled and ethical strategy. Assured battle space access. Full spectrum dominance. Which, what that means is everything from the highest high intensity conflict down to shows of force and peacekeeping. You should be dominant in that when you put the American forces in. It's incredibly unilateral. It's not the whole idea of it being an equal battlefield, right? Mm. Not the American way of war. Yeah. After all, we love Super Bowls. We want to see the opposition swept off the field of life. The Gulf War était the premier cyber war. La guerre du Golf a été une guerre mondiale en réduction, c'est-à-dire au niveau des médias, grâce à CNN, grâce aux technologies d'acquisition d'objectifs par satellite, grâce à la télécommande de la guerre. What about remote warfare, using just precision missions? Sure. Go ahead. Let's do it. The downside. The downside is, you know, during the Kosovo Air Campaign, there was never any control on what targets we were hitting of the Serb forces. Even though it looks like it should be very easy to set up these unmanned aircraft flying out there. Why, wow, sir, you can buzz that target at 15 Gs, you'll have your TV camera in the back. Why, wow, it'll be just, it'll be phenomenal. Meanwhile, you got some guy on the ground saying, I, I can't follow this. If you always want to be faster than the next guy, and it's the technology that's driving the speed and acceleration rates. When do you stop having human response time and start having machine response time determining your tactics? Because machines ultimately are faster than humans, right? As soon as you can. As soon as you can, okay. As soon as you can. La puissance de la technique est en train de devenir une sorte de religion. À travers les technologies de l'information, il y a la possibilité d'un fondamentalisme de la technique qui est aussi redoutable que le fondamentalisme religieux. This is on a long path. It's new only if you don't take the long perspective. It's like what we're doing in northern Iraq. It's flying aircraft over. Sea. Is anybody alive down there? Anybody at home? Là, ce n'est plus le, la dimension géostratégique des médias. C'est la dimension géopolitique. Before 9/11 and after 9/11, it's as if whole histories, critical questions, and future hopes disappeared into this temporal rift, lost between wars of there will terror be no going and counterterror. We September must take the, the battle to the enemy, disrupt his plans, we are in a conflict, and confront the worst good threats before they emerge. Why were so many unable or unwilling to know then what they know now? War has always been a virtual reality, too traumatic for immediate comprehension. But like reality's most intimate counterpart, the dream, virtuous war requires a critical awakening if we are not to sleepwalk through the human tragedies of war. My travels in virtuality ended where they began over a decade ago, in the sands of the Mojave Desert. We try to be as accommodating to the press as possible because the press can be a very useful tool. We're there to help them and provide peace and stability. We have a total of uh, 50 Titans that are Iraqi American. What's your role in this one? Chief of Police. Chief of Police? We use them as sources to try to drive a wedge between the bad guys and the good guys. How to interact with the people, learning the language, learning the culture, and that's what we're getting out of this training. Which part of this network we might be able to influence. When we make those kind of decisions, it has to be based on reality, the truth. 
uh, or as close to it as we can ascertain. Not just as a matter of national policy, but as a matter of global security. So WARCO was formed and they were marketing this to different countries. Did it have a happy ending? It didn't get to the ending. <laughs> Maybe tonight.